What's going on guys? So today I'm out here at Camper Clinic RV in Rockport, Texas, and we're going to take a look at this enormous Montana. Now this is a floor plan that's becoming more and more common because of how much additional storage it provides you and what it can give you in terms of space on the inside. So I think you're going to enjoy this video. Hang tight. I'll be right back. So this has a gross vehicle weight rating of 16,500 pounds, has a cargo capacity of 2,760 pounds, and it rides on 16 inch G-rated tires. Very nice. This has the level up hydraulic automatic leveling system on it. Huge, huge fifth wheel. And again, this floor plan is becoming more and more common because it gives you a tremendous amount of storage and it gives you a really beautiful interior. So this Montana has five slides. It's got Schwintech slide here, rack and pinion slide back there, Schwintech slide here, rack and pinion, Schwintech slide in the back. Five slides on this thing. This is just a massive, massive fifth wheel. And if you want to know what a Schwintech slide is, it's essentially a rack and pinion slide. It's just called a Schwintech slide, but it has these tracks that ride the side of the box and then there's a motor that has gears that pull the thing in versus this slide system, which has your tracks on the bottom, essentially rails on the bottom that slide into the frame. Let's quickly walk around the outside, take a look at it. So opening up this front storage bay, one thing I like is the use of these high density baggage doors. They're not super thick, but they're definitely very robust in terms of the density. Looking in here, not a ton of storage up front. This is gonna be probably about two feet wide, about three feet tall. Gives you a good amount of space for most of your connection supplies, things like that. Your wet bay is right next to it. You have a power disconnect right here so you can avoid any type of parasitic draw on your batteries while it's in storage. Nice slam latches, back your furnace. This is gonna be a access hole for your gray tank release or one of your gray tank handles right here. A lot of people don't realize that most RVs have more than one gray tank if you have water connections in the front and the back or in the middle and the front or, you know, some combination of water connections throughout. Underneath, you can see this rides on a 12-inch I-beam frame. It has an 8-inch drop frame beneath it, which gives you that really large pass-through storage up front. Coming around, this has, again, G-rated tires, but what's really nice is these are Saloon G-rated S637 tires. Big fan of these tires. Not to say they'll never fail, but they are definitely a robust tire, and I think most people that go to them are pretty happy. You can see the road armor suspension there. Very, very effective suspension. Has heavy-duty shackle straps and greasable wet bolts, which is really nice. Just makes them easier to maintain in service. Coming around this way, back your water heater. 50 amp connection. This is going to be an area to access your black tank and gray tank handles. And here is storage areas underneath the coach. Really nice. like that they have a strut that holds these up. But check that out. You have your 50 amp cable in here. Huge, huge storage. And we'll look at more of it when we get around to the side. Check this out. Just a massive, massive storage area. You can pretty much carry whatever you need. You could even stuff a kayak in there if you had to. I'm coming around to the back. LED lighting on the back. You have a two inch trailer receiver back here. All frameless windows all the way around except for the sides of the slide. Let's open up this back storage. So as we open up this very heavy baggage door, you can see it's prepped for struts, so if you wanted to put struts here, you can. The reason why they don't is because sometimes you need to get close up, and you may prefer the magnetic latches that hold it up completely, so you don't have to stop right about here where the strut would lift the door to. But check this out. This is super cool. I love this because if you have mountain bikes, if you have kayaks, if you have kids' toys, if you have anything large, this gives you a tremendous amount of space to store it and a nice easy way to access it. So this tray pulls about halfway out, a little more than that, 
And if you have bikes and things like that, just think about it. You could simply throw it up here. And there's plenty of room right here for handlebars so you don't have to worry about them hitting. Just a really, really thoughtful use of space. Tons of it too. Be careful how much you load on this though because you don't want to put things that are incredibly heavy because everything you put back here is actually going to start to remove some weight off of your truck. So I wouldn't put like, you know, two or three large generators and a bunch of heavy stuff back here. I would try to probably keep this tray to under a couple hundred pounds if you could. Coming around this side, you can see you have your two additional access doors to that side storage, which is really nice. And this is really great, especially if you set like a barbecue grill or something out here. So you can put your tools and equipment and even your small barbecue grill inside of one of these hatches and you have quick access to it. Spare tire underneath there. This unit has two awnings. Let me step back so you can see them. You have one awning right here with some speakers under it. And then you have your front awning right over here. Coming around, this has the Moride step above step system on it as well. And this is the 3741 FK. So let's step inside of this unit. I like this grab handle as well. A lot better than the other traditional style handle. But as we step inside, you'll see they went with kind of that deeper, richer, more traditional color scheme inside. Try to kind of pan around a little bit here so you can see what we're looking at. This is a front kitchen unit. And they've done some really interesting things up here in the front. So they give you this really large wraparound booth style dinette, which can convert into a bed. Then they give you this table that gives you the ability to kind of reposition it. It's a very interesting table design. You simply push it down when you release it to turn it into a bed. But when it's up, you can actually reposition the table in all sorts of different configurations based on how somebody might be sitting at the table. So if you're working on a laptop, you can scoot this top surface around to get it closer to you. Very cool, though. An incredibly large front seating area. If you have a big family and you want to have everyone kind of sitting together, this is a really cool way to do it. Also, if you want to convert this into kind of a bunkhouse, you could probably throw a curtain or something up here. Just be careful about your return air ducts up here for your Whisper Quiet air conditioning system, which this also has. I like how they give you this nice blind that blocks the light coming in. So if you have somebody sleeping up here, you don't have to worry about the sun just killing them in the morning. Coming around here, you can see it has a very nice kitchen area, cornered sink, but it's cornered in kind of an untraditional fashion, more towards the living room and the other parts of the kitchen. On this side, you can see that they have the upgraded Furion cooktop with the oven beneath it. One thing I like about the Furion cooktop is they seal the burners. So on a lot of these cooktops you see in RVs, it's open around the burner, which means if you spill anything, it kind of spills in underneath the unit. This one, they're sealed, so it's a lot easier to clean. And then they put your vent system right here. There's a nice window next to it. And then you have your residential microwave here, along with some place to store some wine bottles and additional storage beneath. And it's a very good amount of storage. And this RV has five slides. Stepping down into the living room, first stop here, you can see that this opens up to reveal all of your control panels. And then over here, this is actually kind of cool. So this pulls out and gives you this really interesting pantry style storage here. Spices, things like that would fit great there. And one thing I've noticed about this unit, there's no dedicated pantry area. It would essentially have to be this spot here under the microwave. It's a pretty good size. I mean, if you stacked them on top of each other, it'd probably be larger than most pantries and most RVs, but there's no dedicated pantry area that I've seen, which is kind of interesting. Still, lots of places to store things. Lots of cabinets. This looks like it might be for a trash can. Got more storage drawers there. Your cabinets here. Another storage area right here. Nope, that's your trash can. Stepping down into the living room. This has some good size love seats. They're not really love seats in my opinion. They're more the size of a sofa. So in reality, it really has two opposing sofas as opposed to two small love seats because you could probably lay across that and 
not have to really worry about your legs hanging over the end too far. And then you have your theater style seating right here. Both of these convert into beds. So you can actually flip these out and have this enormous bed here in the center if you bring extra kids or you know another couple with you or any guests that you might have. It has a very wide panoramic style fireplace there. Looks to be a 55 inch TV above it. And then you have some more storage above that for whatever you might need to bring along with you. DVDs or Blu-rays, things like that. I think the uh, older I get, the more I realize that most people aren't bringing any of that stuff anymore with all the cloud-based media. You have your thermostat, AC, and fan control there. Stepping up towards the back. Let's make a stop here in the restroom real quick. It has a good-sized fifth-wheel restroom. So one-piece shower stall. Nice size vanity area here. Huge medicine cabinet. Porcelain foot flush toilet way over here. Plenty of room in front of the toilet. You probably have three and a half feet in front of the toilet. And you have a lot of width here too as well. Not a tremendous amount of storage in here. You have a cabinet up top here. So you have some space there for towels and toiletries. And then you have some drawers down here as well that you could also use for additional storage. Overall, not a bad bathroom. Coming around to the back, stepping into the bedroom area. This is a huge bedroom area. Plenty of room on each side of the bed. You probably have, I'm gonna guesstimate about 14 inches on this side of the bed. On this side, probably closer to about a foot. King size bed, nice soft headboard. You have windows going all the way around it. And then you have this enormous window here at the end, which is absolutely great if you're backed up to scenery and you wanna you know, have a great view from your bedroom. On this side, you got lots of storage, and this appears to be a place for a washer and dryer. Yep, that's what it's for. So you can hook your washer and dryer system here. I think it's dryer on top, and then your washer would go right here, and there are your connections for it. If you don't have a washer and dryer, you could use that storage for whatever you need to use it for. And then just a ton of cabinets and drawers back here. Check this out. You know, whatever you give up in the bathroom in terms of storage, you've kind of more than made up for over here. Tons and tons of storage, lots of cabinets, lots of drawers, and it's good depth too. You got probably, you know, 13, 14 inches worth of depth here. Nice hanging rod up top. And then your drawers here probably won't be quite as deep, but you still got a lot of them. So you got nine drawers back here. That's crazy. But yeah, this is a really nice floor plan. Definitely one that if you want to bring toys with you, but you don't want those toys to take away from your living space, just a really, really great unit for that. This has two AC units. And again, they're both whisper quiet units. One thing Keystone does that's a little different than some other brands is they position their return air a little closer together. That way you don't have quite as much of a restrictive, you know, bunch of bends and curves in the ducting. This pretty much goes straight in almost directly into the air conditioning system. It's not quite as quiet, but it is still very quiet compared to a traditional air conditioning system. I think the more manufacturers start putting in just quieter air conditioning systems in general, they can move away from having to do weird things with the ducting. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. Definitely a unit that you can carry a lot of people in. You can entertain a lot of people. And there's just a lot to like about this. Anyways, guys, leave a comment below. I'd love to know what you think about this unit. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.